Hi all, it's Karen and Pluto here for Karen Bluto's on another review channel with another movie review. Uh, we actually tried recording this like three or four times, but we're having some technical difficulties. So yep. we took a break and we're just starting it all over. Sounds good. So on the review channel tonight is Dead and Breakfast. Never saw it. Yeah, blue, 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 blue. Who, are, who are you? Who are you? Bluto. I'm the blue guy. Yeah, you're the blue guy. Um, didn't want to really watch this with me. I had actually seen this with Bob uh, many years ago, and I thought it was a funny movie. So I was like, I want to do it for the channel. So um, this movie came out in 2004, so that's like 15 years ago. Wow. Rated okay. R. It's an hour and 28 minutes. Wow, that's long. No, it's not. For me, it is. Well, for you, because you have a short attention span. So away what? we go. Really? Go ahead. <laughs> so the movie kind of opens with a comic book type opening, just showing different things that um, I believe were supposed to have happened prior to the movie starting. Like keep show. Yeah. And then um, we come upon a group of friends in the RV, Johnny, David, Sarah, Melanie, Christian, and Kate. I think are everyone's names. Uh -oh. um, they're on their way to Johnny's cousin's wedding, who Kate is friends with and is the maid of honor. So, um, of course, there's no cell phone service where they're at, and they are lost. So, no, um, no well, this I, no, I think this still would have been a print the map before you go type deal still then. Oh. I think. I could be wrong. but I don't know how to read a map. Yeah, so um, Kate asks for the map, and Johnny's writing um, on a tablet. He counts the dead animals they find on the road to say a little prayer for them. That sounds like fun. Which everyone thinks that's really, really strange. And they also made a comment that the only reason Johnny's along is because um, his it's his cousin's wedding. Otherwise, that's cool. he wouldn't be with them. Dead animals are a good snack. <sighs> Pick them up on my ship a couple of times. Yeah. So, um, they end up stopping at this gas station. Of course, this is where some of the comedy comes in because there's this random band playing outside. And they're asking for if there's a place they can stay because it's getting kind of late. They want to rest for the night. And he says about uh, Robert Wise's bed and breakfast, you can go over there. I'm sure there's a room. Um, so, this person in the band kind of sings in between on different parts of this, the movie. So... Um, just get used to that if you're going to watch this. Like I said, Bluto has no clue what's going on. But um, they're in this place called Love Lock. That so weird. Yeah. Um, just to let you know, not that it's really important, but apparently it's in the middle of BFB. Like, you can't find it. It's just in the middle of nowhere. So they arrive at the bed and breakfast. Um, the chef is French and really doesn't like people he's snotty stuck up he's naughty snotty oh i thought he's naughty snotty and also there's a drifter around it comes into play later okay so um robert wise the owner comes down it's like oh yeah i'll give you rooms fifty dollars each a right. night and they're like okay cool Jeez. so um Basically, David, the one character, him and Kate are a couple, and he's, like, drunk, so he's, like, just being a total ass. And um, who is it? Sarah is kind of looking around the bed and breakfast, finds Mr. Wise in his room with this box, and it's wrapped in some sort of, like, paper with some images or writing on it. Ooh. And he just explains it's a box that's supposed to bring good fortune and good luck to the person who has it and they're like she's like oh okay whatever so um basically the chef's trying to give him food david knocks a tray on the floor so the chef doesn't like him even less i still ate it um melanie who is kind of a newer person in the group apparently she can speak french communicate with deaf and mute people i'll fill you in on that later amongst other things so um she tries talking to him in french and everyone's like okay screw it. we're going to bed well they leave david downstairs because he's like passed out drunk so david wakes up in the middle of the night he's like oh i'm hungry so he goes out to the kitchen finds pie in the fridge takes it out he's you know cutting out a piece um kate happens to come downstairs they turn on the kitchen light. And I think somebody else comes in, but like the kitchen is like covered in blood and the chef is stabbed against the wall. 
And meanwhile, David had no clue this was going on. So naturally, everybody starts panicking. They're like, um, in the middle of all this, Mr. Wise is having a heart attack. So no phones, no cell phone reception. So David goes, I'll ride the motorbike that's out in the front yard to town. Which he doesn't know how to drive a motorbike and it ends up getting away from him. So next morning, we have the sheriff there with his deputy. They're questioning all of them, telling them, okay, well, you know, they say about this drift or he got arrested uh, the drifter or something during the night and they're like he's like well i can look in to see if he killed the chef obviously we know mr wise died of a heart attack he goes but i can't let you guys leave town so the deputy takes the keys to the rv so they can't leave town um in the middle of all this um melanie's outside meets the deaf and mute gardener and she's communicating with them like i said she knows apparently all these languages and everything um the phone they were asking about trying to get a phone line you know to call their friend to let them know they're probably not going to make the wedding and the deputy is like well there was a landslide the other day so all the phone lines are down are you making fun of me mm -hmm. <laughs> just listening so but the deputy is like but we have a satellite phone at the office or something so a few of them start heading into town johnny gets left behind Sorry, I don't know what to contribute here, so yeah. I'm just listening. So, um, they all go into town, but Johnny, because Johnny's like nowhere to be found. Because Johnny has the keys. Yeah, wrong movie. So, the drifter, they go to the drifter and the sheriff, and the sheriff's trying to talk to the drifter, and he's just not talking, not doing anything. So, um, once they get to town, David and Melanie, well, David's asking if there's a place he can go get a drink or whatever. And they're like, oh, so-and-so's hoedown's going on down the road or something. So, him and Melanie go down to this hoedown. Kate calls her friend, Kelly, that's the cousin's name. And her Kate and Kelly, and, uh, yeah, Kate and Kelly are fighting on the phone, calling each other bitch and some other choice words. And they basically hang up on each other. And the deputy looks at Kate and he's like, you like to call people names. Like totally, you know, backwards, clueless. Well, you're going to count my gray hairs while I'm talking. No, I'm just listening. So, um, Johnny's at the bed and breakfast alone, as I said, and he's locked out of the house. Um, he starts looking around to find a way in. Well, then we cut back to town and the sheriff's like, well, even though I have the drifter in custody, I can't let you leave town. So, um, they're like, you might as well just hang out. You can stay at the B&B, you know, until we get this all situated. So, as Christian and Sarah are leaving the um, sheriff's place, they see the town of records next door. So, they go... Well, I like listening to records. Yeah, they... No, not those kind of records. Oh. These are paper records. that have words and you can... About the town's history. Okay. So, they're in, they go and look, um, amongst other things, and try to get some information. So, we cut back to Johnny. Johnny uses a ladder to climb up into an, the open window, which is Mr. Wise's room. And as he goes in, he knocks the box over, and it opens up. The box. You opened it? Yeah. He came. So, <laughs> eventually, uh... Johnny goes and um, starts killing people. He kills the gardener and so on. Um, That's not nice. So we'll get back to him later. Um, at the Hall Records, they were kind of finding some info regarding Mr. Wise, but the lady who oversees the office was saying, you know, if you want the real story, you should talk to me. And she starts discussing how she saw Mr. Wise and some other um, Oriental, Chinese, I can't remember exact wording they use, gentlemen, um, dig up Mr. Wise's newborn son, and they did some kind of ritual and put him in a box. So, um, they're discussing, you know, about being safe and everything, and she's like, oh, don't worry, she has this huge gun. And she goes, I'm, and she cocks it, and she's like, I'm always safe. So, um, but in the process of all this, too, with the drifter, Sarah sees a book he has in his jail cell with a picture of the box and says about Mr. Wise having it. And he's like, did anybody open it? And we're like, well, no. But um, shortly after Sarah and Christian leave, um, 
somebody comes into the hall records, tries to attack the staff, and there's a gunshot. So we cut away. There's Sarah and Christian head back to the bed and breakfast. They go upstairs. I think they go upstairs. Somehow they're searching for Johnny, trying to get everybody together because it's like, okay, you know, we don't know what's all going on here. They find, I think, just the paper because they don't find the box lying on the floor. So Sarah knows the box has been opened. So they head back into town. Um, so then we get to, uh, David and Melanie at the hoedown bar thing and, um, all the people start, like the locals are talking like, you're from out of town da, 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 and don't stay at the bed and breakfast. And they're like, well, gee, thanks for letting us know ahead of time. Cause they're saying about strange things going on. So, um, eventually everybody kind of starts coming to the hoedown, including Johnny. And he brings, he, he's carrying the box with him. And what he does is whether the person is dead or alive, if he takes a piece from them, whether it's hair, skin, blood. Do you want to tell this story? I can give you my notes. No, I'll just play it. Um, if he sticks it in the box, then he can control that person. Oh. So even though like he's killed a couple people because he put a piece of them inside the box, I don't know if you would say what piece. It depends. All right, it depends. Like it could be just blood, skin, hair, an eyeball. Um, maybe an eyeball. So, um, basically, then that's what he starts doing. And I don't, I don't want to say they're exactly like zombies, but they're very mindless at this point. So he walks in, pulls some hair off the deputy, put the deputy's hair in the box. The deputy basically starts shooting everybody. And basically, as I put it at this point, all hell's breaking loose because people are getting shot. So Johnny's going over, scooping blood, putting in the box. Those people were coming back and attacking other people. Um, and in the middle of all this, like when they finally think they get everything calmed down and, and Sarah and Christian are trying to round up like Kate and David and Melanie to escape. Um, Johnny somehow has an ex axe and beheads Christian. X. Axe. I said X, I meant X. Oh. So the others end up running out. I mean, because Sheriff had gone with them at this point as well. And as they're trying to leave, run away in the Sheriff's truck, they end up hitting the drifter who escaped from jail. So they throw him in the back of the truck and go back to the B&B because they're like, okay, we're going to get in the RV and we're leaving. Well, they get back to the B&B, try to get in the RV and the keys are in town because the Sheriff didn't grab them. So... They're like, okay, everyone into the bed and breakfast. So everybody go, starts running up the steps to go back into bed and breakfast to start boarding up the place. And David falls on the steps and crack breaks his head open. So there's blood left on the steps. So we go back to Johnny at the hoedown saying about, you know, we need to recruit the rest of the town. We're taking everything over. Um, so we got to go. So they start going through town, attacking people and adding them to the box, basically. Um, we go back there boarding up the B&B, &B, and at this point, the drifter comes to. He's explaining what happens regarding the box. He said, um, "If this, the, basically what it is, is the box holds a spirit. And if that spirit breaks free, it will have the first body it sees. And then pieces are placed in the box to become possessed, basically. So basically, it's kind of an evil thing, not evil. A, not a good luck fortune thing, as Mr. Wise said. So what's funny kind of at this point, too, is Johnny starts using Christian's head as a puppet throughout. So he's carrying the head and he's making it talk. And yeah, yeah. Um, Got gotcha. you. They're all heading through town to get into the BFB. Um they're trying to come up with a, a plan because the drifter says something about if they, something about remove the bones from Mr. Wise's body, they can do a ritual to stop what's going on. So the sheriff, the drifter, and Melanie uh, decide to go dig up Mr. Wise's body because they thought it was still in town. The sheriff goes, no, he left orders for his body to be immediately buried upon death. What are you doing? Richie. So, um, they sneak out the back door while Johnny and the rest of the possessed town folk are out front. And he keeps calling the others to 
um, come outside. Well, um, they're trying to determine like weapons at one point and here. The girl, Sarah, like concocts these guns using like pipes and wrenches and it's pretty cool. So they start, you know, blowing up the uh, people outside and everything. Um, and I put it in here about random musical numbers. Um, cause at one point they break into a musical num number of all of them line dancing, the possessed ones. Yeah. I mean, like I said, this movie's silly. So, I mean, don't go into it, taking it seriously, you uh -huh. know, um, it's no Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead is a lot better. I will review that at some point as well. But I mean, this one's enjoyable. Like Poltergeist. So, yeah. That was a good musical. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, good movie. Yeah, I was going to say, I mentioned about um, going to m get Mr. Wise's body and everything. Yep, you did. Um, Johnny eventually realizes there's blood on the steps and figures it's one of the people. Well, David also happens to look out, is looking out the window at that point and realizes his blood's out there. And he's like, oh, crap. You his know? blood's outside. His blood's outside the B&B &B because he fell and smacked his head prior to them all going in and didn't clean oh. it up. And then afterwards, they found out about just the blood, put it in the box, and Johnny owns your butt. Really? So, well, Johnny in this. So, um, Johnny starts sending everybody to go get some of the blood because he goes, that's how we're going to take over the bed and breakfast because we'll be able to turn somebody from the inside. So, um... Everybody starts, like, the possession ones start coming towards the, the steps, trying to get it. David goes running outside, trying to battle them off. Um, eventually, one of them gets the blood, gets it back to um, Johnny, and Johnny adds it to the box. But, um, so eventually, I mean, they cut away to the cemetery, and they're digging and everything. Other Some other things happen in there. But um, they eventually get back to the bed and breakfast, and... Um, David's talking to Kate about handing him something and he says something about their relationship and yeah, it's been too long and he's basically possessed and he turns around and beats the crap out of Kate. So she's up, she's dead. Um, she, and then Sarah tries to come in and see what's going on, notices David's possessed. So they are battling around. She has, I can't remember if it's a chain. She has some sort of saw. I can't remember if it's a chainsaw or not. She eventually gets it started, flips it around and cuts his head off. You don't know what a chainsaw is. No, I can't remember if it was because they had a couple different saws at one point. Oh. So I don't remember if it was a chainsaw or something else. Oh. So um, we cut back to the cemetery. Uh, there's a couple possessed people to show up start attacking um they have run into the town doctor he tries to help he ends up getting killed and um they're still trying to get to the body so sarah's alone at the bed and breakfast there's a noise in the kitchen and basically all the possessed people are just breaking in from everywhere so go back to the cemetery like i said it's a little bit back and forth at this point um they get mr wise's body out the drifter gets the bones from the body performs the ritual um, they start heading back into a town. They get attacked by a few of the possessed people. The sheriff ends up getting killed. But in the middle of all this, the manager from the town hall comes out dressed in camo from head to foot. All of these, this gun equipment, and starts blowing people up to no end. Um, basically, she gives um, the drifter and um, Melanie her car, a couple weapons that says, go take care of this. I'll take care of the town. So, um, basically, Sarah ends up getting cornered in the bed and breakfast. Like, she's on the stairs. They're coming downstairs, upstairs. You know, it's she's basically buried under all of them. So, they get Melanie and the Drifter. I feel bad calling the Drifter, but that's his name. Um, get back to the B&B. &B. They're trying to get ready to go get Johnny. Johnny comes up behind the Drifter, knocks him out. Um... Tries to start going after Melanie. Melanie was given this archery thing. Archery thing. Archery gun thing. You know, when it, bow and, not, it's not a bow and arrow, but it's an archery with the bow and you can push it with the gun. You can tell I don't know guns or anything like that. Um, and he's like corn, trying to corner her. Well, she eventually grabs the bone that's needed to kill Johnny. And Johnny, she, they're like right up against each other. She's holding the arrow at him. And then Johnny's like, you can't hurt me. You're vegetarian or something goofy. Well, she shoots the bone. It starts to go in. And then she turns around and kicks it in the whole way. Johnny's dead and all the possessed people basically die. So, um, 
the drifter comes to at this point, um, starts reversing the spell to put everything back into the box. Uh, Melanie goes in the house to see if anybody's still alive, finds Sarah. So basically the movie ends. There's Sarah, Melanie, and Drifter. Um, they have a fire out in front of the B&B, &B and they're trying to burn the box. And then they eventually leave town in the RV, but the box did not burn. And that's the end of our movie. Like I said, this is one you don't go in taking it seriously. I mean, it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be goofy. Um, honestly, is it for everyone? Probably not. Like I said, um, I can't remember if, when I saw it with Bob if we had rented it or how we ended up watching it. I don't remember if it was on TV or whatnot. And I was just like, oh, dead and breakfast. It'll be good. It'll be, you know, it'll be just a funny horror movie. And you know, it's funny. I mean, everybody might not get the humor and all that. And like I said, it's definitely a movie you do not take seriously. Um, it's goofy. You know, the characters are goofy. Some of the characters are bitchy. Some of the characters are asshole. You know, you get a little mix with all the characters in there. But like I said, it's enjoyable. I feel it has rewatch value. And Pluto's making fun of me in the background. So like I said, um, it's a movie like I feel, if you want to watch it once, Definitely, it's worth the time, considering it's under an hour and a half. Um, like I said, I can't, I, had, I probably have only seen it a handful of times, but I do feel it's a movie that does have a lot of rewatch value. Um, we ended up, I rented this through Netflix, through DVD through Netflix, because um, it's, like I said, with it being like 15 years old, being able to find it on anything you can't. So that's where I got it. Um, I'm not sure how much it goes for uh purchase wise or anything like that but that is it for this movie review please Bye. remember to like comment subscribe oh. bell icon so you know when we post new content share the page i would great we would greatly appreciate it. not just me but Bluto would I'm appreciate it as well it's your channel um subscribe if you want also amazon no, if you want do it yeah amazon wish list I mean, is on. also posted so if you want to Help the channel out. Get us some stuff to review. We will review it. We we will be more than happy to watch it and accept it. I'm always more than happy. Yeah. <laughs> Comment. Like I said, nobody's commented yet. So you cry about it. I, I cry. Know it. I'm just used to. She I have does. I have people that interact on my other channel, K Doll Games Toys and More. Check that out as well. So I mean, I do interact. Or if there's a movie you want us to review, put it in the comments, and we'll see about getting it. Yep. And I'm getting the hiccups. So okay. I will say we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.